Welcome back, everyone. We are here with another special guest, another, I keep saying it, one of the GOATs of track and field. Definitely oh, one wow. of the current wow. GOATs of track and field. Appreciate it. Considering, you know, what he's done over the past couple of years. Kenny Benarek, and just to go off his accolades, I'm going to try and do this off memory because you got, you got some crazy, crazy accolades. <laughs> Olympic silver medalist in 2021, world, ch world championship silver medalist in 2022, um, 19, well, newly minted 19.59 yeah. personal best in the 200, one of the fastest of all time. Um, even went back, you got, you know, junior, uh, what, junior college championships and titles and all yeah, that. Yeah, 44, like, 7, 3, and yeah. That's all, that's all it is, man. Kenny yeah. Benarek. I appreciate it. And now two-time Olympian going to Paris. I mean... What's it, what's it feel to wake up the other day knowing you're going to Paris in two events? I mean, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, it didn't quite hit that I was going to two after. Uh, I mean, we, we already know that the 200 is my event. But then yeah. once I made the team for the 100, I think it like two days later, I was like, damn, like I'm actually <laughs> running the 100. And as a kid, I, would, I was always dreaming about, oh, I'm going to be one of the fastest humans on earth and, mm. uh, you know, represent my country. And uh, to be able to do it for yeah. the 100 and the two, it's, a, it's definitely a blessing. And I'm definitely excited to do it. Yeah, and it wasn't light. I mean, you don't run 9.87 seconds and just be like, yeah, you know, I'm one of the fat. Like, that's a big, big deal. Like, did that time shock you or did you know that something like that was coming? No, I already knew something like that was coming. And, and to be honest, I know that I'm a lot faster than that. Um, mm. For me, as we already know, the 100 is not really my event. And I'm just, you know, getting my feet wet in that event. Um, so I just need a little bit more underneath my belt and I can run 9.7. I mean, that was the goal. Um, I was like, 9.7 is going to win it. And that's what I was trying to do. But... Um, I just need a little bit more experience when it comes to 100. But, yeah, no surprise at all. I mean, the times at practice says it all. And, I mean, I can compete with anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about the preparation leading to an Olympic trials, right? This is probably the biggest. I mean, you could argue that this is even more competitive than an Olympic Games or World Championships, considering the pressure to uh, make the team. But you've done this since 2019. You've made every single global championship team. But what is it that you do to make sure you're prepared on the day to be ready to actually get to the Olympics? I mean, I just... I just have a routine that I follow and I just got to make sure like, hey, I've been here before and don't change anything. I always just make sure just uh, not make the event as big, not make it bigger than it really is. I mean, for me, it's just another race. And that's what really helps me get through Olympics and just trials and everything else. Nice, nice. And now as you kind of look forward and actually even diving back where got on the 100 team, you had a couple days before the 200. What is it that you do between then? Do you just like block everything off and you focus in or are you kind of keeping tabs on what's going on and, you know, dialing in on the track? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much like blocking everything out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not on my social media. I mean, pretty much when the season starts, I'm not on social media. Um, so yeah, just for me, just to focus, recover, kick my feet up, have fun, watch some anime or uh, I think we were watching a little bit of The Boys recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just more so just calming my mind and getting ready for the next event. So not on social media because your social media goes crazy like you, you got like your social media like yeah, yeah, yeah. very very active so then what's going on with your social media who's who's running it what's going on uh, so i got a set of team uh i got a person named mayo jack nelson's also helping mm -hmm. um a lot of other people um i got a social media handler uh kaya and megan um yeah, yeah, yeah. they all been handling that for me and I mean, that's what I need to be an elite athlete. I mean, my focus is on track and that's what i want to do but we also want to make sure that you know the social media part is doing well as well yeah and like we were saying just before where after the tokyo olympics you were like basically no one knew you despite you know you being extremely successful at that point why was it important to dial in to you know really promote yourself on social media and all that i mean everybody sees the end result and nobody really sees what you know led up to that result so mm -hmm. we want people to see the inside of what athletes do at practice or what it takes to be an, an olympian you know yeah, trying yeah. to inspire all the little kids and people from juco and yeah just know that we're human and you know, we, we put blood, sweat, and tear in this sport in order to get to where we are. Like, it's not easy, and that's what we want the people to realize. Yeah, and you feel like it's... Because on the outside looking in, we think it's... We look like it's easy. You look like you're gliding down the track. You look like, you know, you're so smooth and making it look easy. But behind the scenes, it's like, it's tough. Yeah, everything is tough. I mean... Sometimes I make it look easy. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll make it look easy, and then people are like, "Oh my gosh!" Like he ran fast as hell, looked easy, and then in my mind, like, man, that's that kind of felt like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after the two hundred, you were like, you know, you were what tightening up and all that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, throughout the race, uh, I executed pretty much, I would say, ninety percent of the race, mm -hmm. um, and I had a little tightness that came up, and I just let off the gas, and I still ran that fast. So. I mean, honestly, you guys know that usually when I cross the finish line and win or lose, I'm not like, ah, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, after the 100, you could see that I was uh, really ticked off because I knew mm -hmm. I should have won that and I, and I lost it. Um, 
but with the 200 like there's a lot of upside and i was happy to see the performance because i was like hey like i i was there yeah and i i let off the gas because i had to but you know the paris is what matters and i know i'm going to be ready yeah so even knowing like because everyone there was a lot of people rooting for you to win even though like on the surface right Noah allows is like the favorite he has all the you know the gold medals but there's a lot of people rooting for you because we want to see the storyline we want to see you know you going in as the you know u.s champion and we know that you have the capabilities but coming off you you feel comfortable like okay no i got this i can like yeah like i i mean i've said this right after i said i'm not losing mm -hmm. i'm not losing paris because i know exactly what it takes yeah. and i i mean my body feels great after that race i was like yeah i have a lot more in the tank like usually i know when i put everything down the line like i'm gassed but i was not <laughs> gassed at all i was ready to go i i was hyped and i was like yeah like I i'm coming nice nice and so i i asked you after the race i mean feeling about this team where since 2021 it's been the exact same team 2021 22 23 obviously you know Courtney lindsey made it last year and you know um other years right there was you know i had four but this team is very very strong and there's a potential to get all three on the podium like there was in 2022, uh, right? What are we looking at when we look at the landscape of the sprints right now? I mean, just this year alone, you know how, you know how it is. Uh, yeah. When the Olympic year comes, everybody comes out of nowhere and people are <laughs> running fast. I mean, you got you got high school kids now that True. are putting their hands down and then you got college kids that are coming and then you got all the pros. Yeah. Like this is a very important year and everybody's running fast. And I mean, yeah, like we definitely have the potential of sweeping the 200 and the 100 if we if we all do what we need to do and um yeah like it, it's very very exciting like i'm more amped up for this one than i was for tokyo because just yeah. the whole atmosphere the competitiveness like it's going to be fire yeah yeah i mean that'll also be different where you're not you didn't have anybody in the stands before you couldn't i mean i don't know if you brought anybody but like it was basically empty for the most part right i'm yeah. sure that's going to get you a little more amped up just having people yeah for sure i that. mean that's that's one of the things i'm most excited for i mean you got the competition side but also just being able to have my support team there yeah. and the family i mean that's what's most important also the fans yeah. just having that actual olympic atmosphere that's what's something that was lacking last time i mean i keep telling everybody we're in the finals for the 200 and i'm looking like it's empty and i'm just like <laughs> This is really the finals, like biggest race of my life. Yeah. But it doesn't really feel like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is definitely what I'm most excited for is the fans, family, and there's just having the support team with me. And I mean, I wouldn't be there without them anyways. There you go. So let's talk a little bit about the evolution, the progress of Kung Fu Kenny, where every single meet you're bringing out a new headband. And it's been going on since, I mean, I feel like, what, years at this point where you've yeah, you know, yeah, had a couple yeah. of headbands, yeah, right? Yeah. Talk about like how that came about and why you choose like every a different headband every single time. So Kung Fu Kenny has a set of values that pertain to me, which is humbleness, discipline, respect, and dedication. And I try to live those values on the track and off the track. And the reason why we came up with Kung Fu Kenny is because uh, I keep telling everybody is that you know, when you see us wearing all the uniforms, you got Nike, Adidas, and whatever, and, you know, it's either white, blue, or whatever whatever color yeah. they have for that year. And it's hard to differentiate, you know, who is who sometimes. And for me, I wanted to stand out as my own, you know, own person. Mm -hmm. And you already know that I'm a silent warrior. So I was like, what, what can we do that will show who I am as a person, but not mm -hmm. making me be something that I'm not? Yeah. And, you know, that's why we did the bow, because I'm a big anime lover. Yeah. And I've always worn handbeds in like, I think middle, no, not middle school. I was at college. I started mm -hmm. with the headband and um, yeah, just every single time we go to the track, we're always trying to have a different theme. Mm -hmm. um, for this, it was a Naruto theme headband. So, you know, each round it was a, it was a, a different type of level. Yeah. You know, like a uh, Dragon Ball Z, you got Super Saiyan and yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for Naruto, it was like, okay, you got hit the Hidden Leaf handband, then you got his Nine Tails Chakra mode, then you got his Ultimate mode, which is Marion mode. And that's just kind of the same thing we were doing with the hundred with uh, Sasuke's uh, yeah, eye, eye ability. Yeah. So yeah, we're just trying to trying to have fun with it, and yeah, I mean that's how. I mean, we're just trying to change the sport. Right. So even back when you were in junior college, you had the headbands, but they weren't like the unique. Uh, yeah, we didn't start doing the whole unique thing until I would say like two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, well, we did have the different type of headbands like two to three years ago. But once we started actually doing like a theme that started this year. So all this is brand new. So we have a lot more in store. OK, so we should expect six different headbands. Yeah, so when we get to for Paris. Paris, you'll see different six different headbands. Yes, for sure. Nice. I like that. I like that. And so Chris isn't here right now. We were talking on the show after the I think it was during after the heat of the 200. And we were kind of talking about how, you know, you should be one of those guys who's getting a lot of spotlight, getting a lot of recognition. And shout out to Chris. He was saying that, like, 
you need to talk a little bit more. You like if let's say you won the two hundred, you should have like turned around to Noah and like you know did a little you know pointing. Uh, don't worry, don't like worry. That. I I I have some things I'm gonna do when I when I finally get the win. Yeah, uh, I mean. It's not going to be anything crazy, but it's a little something. <laughs> a little but something. I definitely got something in store. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, not being talked about, it's not it's not my focus. My focus yeah. is track. I'm going to be who I am. If they want to talk about me, it's it's fine. If they don't, it's fine as well. Um, I just let my feet do the talking. Mm. You know, and I like being the underdog, and I like just going out and grinding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Handling so, my business. So if we we see you in gold, like we should expect something big. I say it won't be crazy, but I definitely got stuff. Like every single time, every race I go to, you know, I always have something in my head. Like, okay, when I win, I'm gonna do this. And, yeah, yeah. You know, so everybody's got a little bit of that. And I guess I'm also curious because Dennis Mitchell, back when he was running, like in the '80s and '90s, he was kind of like a very flashy vocal. He was very, yeah, very vocal. Yeah, yeah. Like he had the, you know, the whole Green Machine kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. persona. I don't know if that carries through. You know, obviously you got your own personality and like everyone in your group does, but does that kind of carry through? Because when I see things in the background with him, it seems like very, still very animated as a person. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I would say most of the group, that energy kind of goes in, goes in all of us. Yeah. And I mean, you, you've probably seen, you know, Shakari, you see Melissa, TT, yeah. all of them kind of have that energy. Kyrie mostly too. Yeah, Kyrie is uh, like. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kyrie. Um, but yeah, with me, um, I mean, I get it, but I'm, I'm more controlled mm. with it. Um, I've never really been the type of person to be so animated. So, like I said, if I started like saying uh, you know a bunch of stuff and kind of screaming on top yeah, of my yeah. own, I'd be like, that wouldn't be me. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah, like that definitely helps us out. And that's the one thing that Dennis is great at is just mm. making sure that everybody's ready for the event. And I mean, we have that family vibe as well when it comes to our group. Yeah, yeah. and I know I asked you in the press conference, but seeing all three of them sweep that hundred meter dash. Oh yeah, that was amazing. That was, it was like crazy. Yeah. So when I saw that, I mean, just all of us like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, a coach. I don't. I don't know if a, if I don't know if a coach has ever done that before. If I'm mistaken, I could be wrong. But I mean, just to they, see that, especially yeah, for yeah. Olympic trials, is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, he, all all those girls have worked their butt off to get where they are and I was just happy for him and for them to, to get that done yeah do you talk with someone like TT where she dealt with injuries you know throughout the year and you've dealt with a lot of injuries but you've been able to like you know persevere and make teams like what's the support between whether it's TT you know with her injuries earlier in the year or just others throughout the group when you have injuries and setbacks I mean we all have our separate teams I mean sometimes we use the same people but other times we just go out and you know she has her massage therapist that mm -hmm. works on her I have mine but it's all kind of the same thing, just making sure not to do too much, rest up, recover, and just get ready for the the, the, the big day. Got you, got you. So let's talk about this four by one a little bit, where you you ran at World Relays, you you were kind of killing the back straight, like really, really cooking. I say second, uh, that second leg is mine. I'm not, I'm not doing third. Okay, so, oh second, yeah. Second leg is mine. Okay, okay, so I'm curious why. So, cause in my mind, I was like, Christian, Fred, you, and then Noah. But you're saying that you don't want that third leg. I mean, I can do it, but I feel like I certified, my, certified myself as that second leg. Like, I I ran what? What was it? You were running eight, yeah, yeah eight on something. Both, um, so, and, pre and I'm, we're not even peaked yet. By the time we get to Olympics, I'll be faster. So, if I was running that fast back then, what can I run on that second leg mm, now? Yeah. Um, but I mean, honestly, whatever the coach wants me to do, I'll do. But I prefer to do second leg. But if he wants me third, that's fine. <laughs> so then, what would be an ideal team? Obviously, we know teams got to get selected. But if you could pick using the guys I that mean, we know right now, honestly, how I would—I mean, I, I think I told you this before, but at Bahamas, I would keep the team the same. Honestly. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got Christian, so it'd be Christian or uh, Christian or um, Courtney, mm -hmm. and then it'd be me. And you know, if Christian takes that first leg, Courtney could be. I prefer him to be third, or third Kyrie. Leg. And then you obviously got Noah. I mean, yeah, yeah. for me, I kind of vouch for them because we have that chemistry. And as I told you before in the Bahamas, like from day one, once we started practicing, everything was it was fluid. Yeah, and there was no. We didn't make it complicated, and everything worked out. And we ran that fast while we were not even that peaked. Yeah. And by the, like I said, by the time we get to the Olympics, like we're gonna wait, run way faster than that. So my ideal team would be something like that. But obviously, it's not my decision. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, that's what I would do. But if not, you know, it'd be me, Fred, and Noah, and Christian. But you know, whatever order, 
you know, Fred second, me third, Noah uh, last, and Coleman. That, I mean, that should work too. Yeah, it makes that. That's kind of the. I was advocating for that, like after World Relays, because it makes sense, right? You already have the chemistry. Three of y'all train together, and then mm -hmm. you add in Noah, and yeah, I feel like y'all train relatively close together. Yeah, in the we're same city. All, all of us are in Claremont, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, if we need to work on something, I go. We go to his track, or he goes to ours. It's literally five minutes away. That and makes it was sense. just It's just easier for us to do that, you know. Yeah. So let's say whether it's you know that team from World Relays, or you know we had to put subs in with Christian Fred or whatever maybe. Be. What's what do y'all think it could do? Is the world record in play? Uh, I forgot what is the world it's record. It's thirty. What is it? Thirty six eight from twenty twelve, by by Jamaica. Yeah, I, I definitely. For, yeah, for sure, that's in threat. I mean, mm. like I said, what we ran at Bahamas and we weren't even that fast then. Yeah, so it was like the what, first week of May. Yeah. yeah, for real. So for how fast we ran there, and like our handoffs could still be, you know, better. They yeah. weren't perfect, but they can be better. So with all that, like, I definitely think that's under threat. We can definitely have a chance of doing it if we do everything perfect. You know, just keep the stick flowing, and we definitely get that. Nice, nice. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, the thing is uh, flying. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna, like you said, there's so many, there's so many things that go into the decision making with relays. But yeah, a yeah. lot of politics, as we already know. But I think this year we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it done. Yeah, definitely will. And then you've also spoken about, you know, you've dabbled in the 400. I mean. Obviously, you were previously a four-two runner, and then you've kind of I mean, yeah. I've been trying to tell my coach to let me start running it again. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you should you should because it's like you already you've already super talented. You're across the board one, two, four, and like I don't know, maybe twenty twenty six or something. You might be able to dip is back that, in. Is that an off year? Well, I guess off year they have like that world ultimate challenge. Oh yeah, thing yeah true. That's yeah. coming up. Well, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, every year I've been telling my coach, like, hey, let me run a four, let me run a four. He's like, yeah, or no, or whatnot. Mm. Uh, this year I was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to do it because I need it. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, like you said, I, I've always been a 4-2 guy pretty much my whole life. And then once I get moved down to Florida, that's when I kind of stopped doing it. But, I mean, I do it just because I also want to hit that 43 club. Yeah, and I man. definitely, I definitely can get that if I train for it properly. Absolutely. Um, but I also do it just for strength. Because for me, you know, just going up to the four, it definitely helps out with my 100 and 200. Mm -hmm. I mean, my body, like, it's just embedded in my DNA. So if I just run a little bit, then that's all I need, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I think, yeah, in 2019 coming off, you know, uh, when you went pro, I was very, like, I, I think it was, I forget, uh, JUCO championships or whatever. Like, you ran... 44 4 or something like crazy yeah it was 44 uh 44 7 as the open four um but i remember i think it was an indoor track i ran like 44 something that's okay, when i started yeah, yeah, getting yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, uh, tension the attention yeah that was and that was like crazy so you have that potential yeah, to be that sure. kind of triple threat yeah. and so with that let's say i don't know obviously the politics come into play but let's say like a whole bunch of injuries or something happened and they tapped you for the four by four. You you be up for it? Like oh, yeah. I'm talking I about Paris. Put, put me in coach. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely up for that. I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know Noah has this thing about trying to get in that four by four. But yeah, if if, I, if there's an opportunity where they want me to run, I'm, I'm definitely out. I'm, I'm not scared of a little pain. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so then, <laughs> can I can I ask then? Let's say they did put Noah on the four by four. Would you feel slighted a little bit? <laughs> I mean, I got I gotta be honest. I mean, has he ran open open four hundred this year at all? No, he hasn't run in a couple years. I mean, if he runs an open four and shows what he's got, then okay. But if he doesn't, then I don't think he should be on there. Mm, okay, you you'd want you'd want a spot if that spot kind of opened up. I mean, if they want me, okay. But I'm not gonna force my way in there. That's fair. You know, fair. I'm not I'm not gonna do that at all. I mean, uh, the other guys that uh, made the team, they yeah, earned their yeah. spot, so you know they're ready to go. They got it. There you go. All right. Well, four by one, we're gonna lock that. Hopefully, we'll lock that in for, oh, yeah, for uh, sure. second leg, for sure, which will be good. Now, as you look forward towards Paris, right? What's the what's the motivation? What's the excitement level kind of for you? I mean, motivation is just, you know, gold medals. That's the, the only goals, thing that's yeah. on my mind. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm just, like I said, I already know where I'm at. There's yeah. not much we need to do. It's just more work on the technical side and, you know, just get ready. I'm already ready. Like, uh, put me <laughs> in now. <laughs> put you in right now. I mean, what's the, because it, it's crazy to see the progression you've made between, um, you know, Tokyo, 19.68, uh, uh, 21. Or 2023, just now, 2024, 19.67. Now in the 100, you're going crazy. Uh, just here, you ran, again, 19.59. Like, mm. what do you think is possible time-wise? Do you think that 19.3, 19.2, are we, like, thinking uh, world record? I'm taking it, you know, year by year. But this year, my goal is 19.3. I like After the race, I texted my coach. I said, hey, I got a 19.3 for you at Olympics. So mm. he said, hey, I'm with you, brother. Mm. And we, we know we got that in me. I mean, even with this race here, if I didn't let up a little bit, that's a 19.4. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I, 
I'm not going to say I'm going to break the world record or anything, but, you know, year by year, we'll see what happens. But this year, my goal is to hit 19 three or faster. If I do that, then, okay, next year is what do I want to hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I'm hey. ready for anything, honestly. Hey, I, I think you're more than capable of it. And do you thrive off pressure where there's so many guys between yourself, Noah, you know, Arian, and internationally, like, Tobogo, so many guys who are in the mix and fighting, like, all of y'all are in 19 fives at this point, right? Do you like the pressure of knowing that there's so many guys who can... I love it. I, I always love competition. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I love track and field. I mean, it's nothing beats, like, you know, just kicking somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> just be honest about it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's the one thing I love about track is, you know, you're always going to have guys that are running fast and, mm -hmm. you know, fast times everywhere. And I'm like, okay, you know, this guy's running fast, so that's going to force me to get faster. Like, that's why I love the sport. You know, you know, you run fast, I run faster. You run fast, I run faster. It's a, it's a whole cycle where you're just always competing against times mm -hmm. and always trying to better yourself. So I guess I'm curious because I, I asked Noah, um, you did um, in this race, right? You were clear coming off the curve, right? Obviously, you got past a little bit, but there's other times where it's like you're not leading off the curve, right? And it's a different race. You have to kind of pick things up. Which race model do you like or you know kind of race playing out do you like i rather honestly i rather just come out of the curve first because my top end speed is just as good um you know if i'm just not tightening up or anything like nobody's catching me and that mm. just comes with uh running the 400s that i mean that's my background that's something yeah. that i got almost over all the guys except for the you know me and tobogo are similar in that way yeah, like yeah, he runs yeah. 400s i ran fours and i mean yeah noah noah is very technical sound and that's what that re that's what kind of gets him going but for me like i have that strength and once i get that technique down like nobody's catching me if i'm getting off the turn first i like it i like this confidence man this is this is big this is big so excited kenny b really appreciate it uh, thanks for having me on absolutely